Hey there, Curvis, and welcome to the 97th episode of the Curve the Cube podcast. Today's episode is with Jennifer Chaparro. She creates 3D interactive street art. You know that really cool stuff you've seen pictures of um, circulating? They usually like go viral. Um, there'll be someone who's drawing a scene like in the middle of the street in Manhattan or something, and it's of Spider-Man jumping between buildings, and you've or or, or a, a scene where it looks like you're standing on the edge of a cliff, like that. That's what she does. She you know does stuff like that or a kayak that looks like it's about to go over a waterfall that you can sit down in because that's really what she does she makes it cool she makes it interactive and you can sit in it and it looks like you're about to go over Niagara Falls or something or the one she did that I got to try out which was um, it looked like <laughs> it looked like I was practicing my balance my balancing act on a giant Crayola crayon <laughs> it was really super cool and it's a, a just like a new version of carnival cardboard cutout things that you stand behind and stick your face in except these you stand on or sit on and they're on the ground and she makes them and they look 3d and it's and it's it's, it's so ingenious how she creates a 3d image on the flat surface it's really cool and she talks about how she does that on this podcast um jen is fun she's extremely business savvy and in this episode she tells her story of how she fell out of the corporate office and into the life of 3d street art at first accidentally and then with all the drive and gusto of a determined business owner and she's just was fabulous fabulous to have on so Please go check her out. She does tours all the time um, in the United States, all over the United States and Europe and stuff too. Um, so even if you're not in South Florida, you know, check out her schedule. She may be coming near you. You can find her online at AmazingStreetPainting.com. She also has a Facebook page of the same name. And she's on Twitter at J-N Chaparro. That's C-H-A-P-A-R-R-O. So go ahead and check her out. She's on Instagram and Pinterest as well. I'm sure you can find her pretty easy. Um, and that's it. So sit back and relax and enjoy this, the 97th episode of the Curve the Cube podcast with Jennifer Shaparo, street artist extraordinaire. Bye. Curve the Cube will now initiate. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Are you Jennifer? Yes, I'm Hi. Jennifer. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Nice to see you. Is that the one that fell off? Actually, what happened was a woman passed out and crashed into me. And there went Took it my, down with it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And, and so I've been kind of babying it along for like, honestly, like five years. And it's and I think it's done. So yeah. it needs to be replaced. And this was, and I, and I was reading reviews and this thing is like really awesome. My because friend see, I can put it me. on top of the camera with this oh, yeah. or on a and tripod. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. The water, the water, and then you've got good. Coffee. Then you've got good um, outs. I know. I need to actually take. Yeah. I no, I don't take advantage. Of, you're gonna be you so mad. Know. Don't get mad at me. I don't take advantage of it like I need to. Well, you sh <laughs> so you just take the card out and stick it in your computer. Is that yeah. True? Actually, I don't. I don't even have to. I have a USB cord. I okay. just connect it directly. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I just do a quick data dump. Oh, uh, data dump. Audio dump when I, you know, get back to my computer. And this usually works out pretty pretty quick and easy. This is pretty awesome. I'm glad you like it. Because I have been looking at because I've been looking at this specific model. Because yeah. Because this one's like recommended, okay? Yeah. And it's like you know I can't really tell how big it is, you know. Well, so what do you can. what do you do that you are are, are in love with tech, um, equipment and stuff? Well, uh, Jennifer does you know travels the world doing uh -huh. these street painting events you're going to find out about here in just a moment. So or maybe excited. You already know that. Mm -hmm. But I chase her around and interview people in the crowd and interview like the other street painting artists. And then I put like a little video together for yeah. the event. Yeah, oh, that's neat. Get like crowd reactions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and he's, he's done some really, he did one that, that I actually, the one I like the best is the why. He yeah, went around I need to do another one in that if series. If, 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 if you don't look at I saw that other, one. Did you did see you? that? I saw that one. one I thought that was really neat. Because, because that's, everybody wants to know why we do it. You, you know, know, the reason, um, the reason I love that one so much is, let me see if I can get this one on. We're getting started. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I literally and have a hundred of them on my YouTube. <laughs> well, the reason, the reason that one struck a, the reason that one struck a chord with me is because one of my, fa my, my first interviews, uh, one of my first episodes was with a friend of mine named Charles Milling, who is a musician. I've known this guy for years, super impressed with who he is inside and out. And 
he said that when he was forming his band, he would go watch musicians play and wait for that moment when he could see their why. Uh huh. Um, and so he's like, I always, and then I, he's like, and then I would ask them what their why is and just kind of get to know what, why are they playing yeah. and see if that's the same reason that I have. Yeah. And that's how he felt out his compatibility with, with his band members. And it, would just, it really struck something with me. Yeah. And so from then on out, I, I have a tendency to ask people. I don't always remember to, but I do have a tendency to ask people what, what's their why. So yeah. I guess that's a good yeah. place to start. What's your why, Jennifer? <laughs> My why. Um... Gosh, that's... She just loves art. I, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I love art. I've always been doing art for all my entire life. Yeah. Um, but it, it took me until after, you know, I, I was over 40 when I discovered the chalk street painting. Right. And um, I kind of did it for fun with my daughter. She was about 14 at the time in middle school at the Middle School of the Arts. Mm -hmm. And I was just looking for something to do. And we went down to the Lake Worth Street Painting Festival. And we're like, yeah, you know, we could do that. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. The pilot was already been open. I apologize. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to load your, your, your file here. And it's, uh, but anyways, I, I digress. You were saying, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> I just want to turn my phone down to go off. Um, yeah, so we had gone a couple couple years together, and we're, we were looking around, going, you know, I think we could do that. Yeah. And, but it's very intimidating because it's so large, you know, to work large like that in the street. And um, so we're like, no, oh, let's try it. And they sh they actually helped you. They showed you how to do it. They had a little um, info session where they showed you how to make the big templates and everything, and they give you the chalk. Yeah. And it's free. Yeah. So like, what the hell? Let's go do it one Have year. Have fun. Yeah, yeah, and it gives you the you know it was for me it was spending a whole weekend with my daughter. You know, middle school's a tough age. Yeah. And she loves art. She was very art. Both of my kids were very artistic. And I thought, you know, this is really, this could be a, a great thing for us to bond with. Absolutely. Spend the whole weekend together. And, and we did it for about four years. You know, we found out we were good at it. We went, kept going bigger. How did you year. Um, share the, split the duties of create, putting something together? You know, it's, it's, we just did it. I mean, it's just like, you take that face, I'll take this face. We'll just start, see gotcha. how, you know, <laughs> and, and we just worked it out and we worked really well together. Didn't, you know, didn't have a lot of problems. And um, so, yeah, we, we did it for a couple of years and then people started coming up to me during the festivals going, well, I'll pay you to come to this festival we're doing. Are you available? And I'm just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> You're going to pay me? Dude? Wow. And I'm doing this for free? And I was like, A little yeah. bit of a light bulb going on. It did. It totally <laughs> did. And, and then I lost my job when mm -hmm. in 2009 when the, the, everything crashed. Um, I, yeah. I had a really nice graphic design job at that point, and um, and I and I, so I was getting some unemployment, and I was still getting alimony. I was like, I'm going to take this time to build a website and build a business and get you know start this as a business. So right. I already had a graphic design business, but I just I basically been morphing it into this street painting business, and um, and so I really we made a business plan. We decided you know what do I have to do to get this in this next level? What do I have to do? What festivals do I need to go to? What awards do I need to get? You know all this type of stuff to, mm -hmm. to get um, to get noticed to get people to call me for more jobs, and so we did that for a couple of years, and it it, it it worked. It did. It took mm -hmm. a little while, mm -hmm. but it did work. And and it was. Um, and then you know my younger daughter went off to college, so I started to do it. Or my older daughter went off to college, and I started doing it with my younger daughter. Did it for a couple of years, and she went off to college. <laughs> so, but I, I have the rite of passage. <laughs> yeah, I, I occasionally work with them, and I'm going to be up in Baltimore next weekend with my older daughter, yeah. who I started with. Yeah, she's going to help me with with a piece up there at a, at a festival, big uh, festival in Baltimore. Oh, that is that is so neat so, that yeah. you know that it's created this bond and and everything for for you and your daughters. Yeah, and I, I that warms my heart. You know, I have I have a four and a half year old and. Um, it's about finding those things that you love to do together that can make some extra special memories. So, it does, yeah. and and it was it was also something that I had never even heard of until yeah. I came down to Florida. I mean, I grew up in California, and there's a lot of chalk artists and a lot of events now out in California. It's been going on for about 20, 20 to twenty five years, um, but I was out there back like in the eighties, and I grew up, you know, I was seventies, eighties, or whatever, and 
there weren't any chalk festivals back then. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had never heard of it. I never knew it even existed <laughs> until I came down here. And, and that it was your hidden special extraordinary well, talents. <laughs> and the Lake Worth event is <laughs> awesome. I mean, it's it's one of the biggest. It may, yeah. be, it may be actually the biggest in terms of, I'm not sure if some, the biggest in terms of number of artists, but they have like 450 to 500 artists participate. That's, a, that's pretty big. It, but it might, in terms of actual um, ground covered with gotcha, chalk art, it gotcha. might be the biggest. I'm not sure. I know it is a big um, event. I hear about it every, every year, and I've yeah. been a couple times, and it's it's always... So I'm sure I've seen you in action. And yeah. then actually, when I was looking at your, pat, your recent stuff, you um, were doing a piece at... Uh, Jerry, Jerry Soma's Feast of Little Italy mm -hmm. and he's a friend of mine ah. and so I was like I bet you I was there too watching that too yeah. that seems like the, that exact thing that if I was passing by I would have been like ooh ooh yeah. like the shiny penny you yeah. know so yeah. it's, it's really what, what's really impressive to me and um, you know seeing it seeing it in pictures on a website and then uh, seeing it firsthand like I just had the pleasure of writing that that Crayola crayon you just put on the <laughs> What boggles my mind is that your brain can conceive of something that is 3D and then apply it to a 2D surface, manipulating the dimensional field yeah. so that when you when someone stands on it, the picture looks like the entire scope is in 3D. And right. it's it it how do you do that? <laughs> Well, and I had to teach myself. Okay. Because there were, when I started um, doing the traditional chalking at, at Lake Worth, it was just reproducing a masterpiece. Just straight, you know, take it, make it bigger on the street. No, yeah. No 3D skewing or anything. Yeah. Um, but I did, I started to see the 3D stuff and, and that's what the clients were asking me for more. Mm -hmm. I, I could see that was where the, the jobs were going to be. So the whole I, interactive element too. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's that's what advertises stuff and and promotes things. And so, I um I, I basically learned how to do it myself. I mean, I have a graphic design background, and there some of the programs that I use are Photoshop and uh, Corel Draw, mm -hmm. and they have perspective tools. Oh. So, uh, but but you know you have to you have to design something that's going to be big, colorful, the right size that people can interact with. And then it, then this program will skew it for you, mm -hmm. and then and then I have to you know uh, put a grid type of thing over it, uh -huh. and, and then I, I grid out on the street and and basically draw it from there. Gotcha. Or do a template too sometimes, um, but it's yeah. It, it the the hardest thing is is coming up with the idea to make it interactive so that people want to be in the picture yeah. and, and be part of the picture and you know that type of thing. So um, I was trying to think. The first one I did, actually, I think was uh, for Jupiter um, at the Jupiter Jubilee, and it was a postcard that you sat in front of, like mm -hmm. you were in the postcard and said, you know, <laughs> welcome to Jupiter or whatever. And, and so it was kind of a simple one because it was a, it was a rectangle right, square. Right, right. And, and what you'll see is when, when the art skewed, it actually becomes a... Um, trapezoid mm -hmm. so that's you know with the with the postcard you can see it very clearly what's right. going on there right but now I've, I've I'm doing a lot more where it's a very freeform outline and yeah. you know like I've got butterflies with the wings or birds you know and it's all shooting out in different directions yeah and, yeah. and it's not just a big square you yeah know? like there I saw that you did a setup for Ford where they had the vehicle on it and it, and it was like on its own car-sized kayak ready to go off a, a, a waterfall right. and then like that's amazing and then the next shot I saw it was there were four girls around the car looking like they were standing on little cliffs around I was just like that's amazing yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know what it might made me think of um <clears throat> when you go to like a carnival and they had those cardboard cut out things mm -hmm. and the face is cut out and so people put their heads and face and you know all of a sudden you're in the picture right right this is this is on like a whole nother level because you you are literally in the picture your whole self and yeah it's yeah. really really impressive and and there's actually a 
um, like algorithms and, and ways to do it mathematically, but I am not mathematical at yeah. all. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very not, I don't like using math to figure these things out. Hmm, an so, artist who's not necessarily mathematical, that yeah. blows my mind. <laughs> well, and there, but there are some, because some of the other artists who do 3D, like there's an architect and, and his wife, and he loves that stuff. Yeah. He's like, yeah, and it goes here, and this is the cross section. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> I, it's very intuitive to me, and, and yeah. I look at it, and you know, what I'll do is I'll print it off, and I'll, I'll like take my camera, and I'll go, yeah, if I'm standing here, it's, you know, yeah. it's going to work. And, and so it is a little bit of a, 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 a I don't want to say crapshoot, but there's, there's some of the experience helps. Every time I do it, I learn something new, or I think, oh, you know, next time don't do that, you know. So, it, and that's what makes it fun for me is that every time I'm doing it, there's it, there's a challenge to to overcome, and it's different. Yeah. And I always try to do, um, almost always try to do different art. I, I rarely do the same piece of art. I saw that, and yeah. and and I was thinking, you know, and and an advantage of putting yourself in a position where you're learning something new in front and, and doing so very publicly, the, the advantage on your side is that it's gone in a couple days anyway, so if you do mess up. Well, but it lives forever yeah, on that's the true. internet. That's true. This is true. This is true. This is true. Yeah. yeah. How is that? I mean, I'm sure you get asked this all the time. You know, what's it like? You know, because most visual art... It, there's a permanence to it. Right. Uh, you know, there, there's a sculpture, like your grandfather, I know yeah. this was a sculptor. Um, you know, you see, we have sculptures, sculptures that are hundreds of years old that are still in museums and stuff, yeah. but yours gone after a couple of days. Right. Um, wh- how does that, what is it inside of you that doesn't bother you about that? Um, well, part of it is, um, the, the main thing is we want to get it finished. Mm-hmm. So if I don't finish, it's very frustrating. Mm. And and sometimes we've had a couple times when the rain comes and you just have to walk away and you're like, oh, that is just uh, the worst. I can imagine. It's like I really wanted to do that piece and finish it and do it right. Well, there goes my next question, whether friend or foe. Yeah, <laughs> definitely foe. And, um, and that's one of the part of the challenges. That's yeah. one, of the, one of the challenges that we always deal with. But it's it's kind of like this, this um, I tell people, it, first of all, it's, job security mm-hmm. because I go to these festivals and they have to bring me back the next year to do another piece. And <laughs> this I, is true. They can't just in the, display your old stuff. Right. I'm in the same <laughs> spot and I'm, you know, every year or something like that, and like at Lake Worth. Yeah. Um, so it washes away and again, and it also, it gives you a chance to just keep trying new stuff and um, it, it lives forever on the internet. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's all about getting people to take the pictures while they're there. And, and I equate it with something like seeing a sunset or being there in a monarch butterfly hatching or something. It's one of those things where, oh my God, what a great experience. Right, right, you know, right. I was here, to, I was there to see it. I was right. there. And now with Instagram and, and everything, you know, people sharing stuff on Facebook, um, it's it's just it's just right for now. I yeah. mean, like 20 years ago, when a couple of the guys, um, there are a couple of famous people who had started doing this, you know, they, they, they were out there, they were doing it, but it didn't catch on. Because there's until, no way to really circulate it. Right, right. You know, not not and, like and, there is now. Right, and then once started, Facebook started really spreading stuff and, and everything, people started sharing all that stuff, and it's it's really created a, 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 a market for it or, or helped it become yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can absolutely... Yeah, I agree with you. Now is the right time. Yeah. Now is definitely the right time. And a lot of people ask me is, like, you know especially artists they don't like to be watched when they're when they're painting yeah and it is a totally because it seems like it's a very vulnerable state. well it's totally different than than um painting in a studio mm-hmm. and um or working on a you know graphic design on a computer and and you know there you're by yourself or you know when you're painting by yourself i got very frustrated because i would i would paint and then I would take my send my photos or my slides off to places and enter competitions or whatever, and I get a no, sorry, you know, and and you, nobody saw it, you know. It's like and and even if it went up in a gallery or something, you maybe twenty people would see it, right? You know, whereas this, I reach so many people. I mean, thousands of people at some of these events. Yeah, and and that is that's why a lot of artists do it, right? I mean, you're, and, and you're, you want you, people to see your stuff, you yeah. Know? And I think and I imagine. It's, a, it's the unique experience of when people see your stuff. First of all, I mean, how many, how many times can an artist say that as they are working, as they're finishing, 
that is the moment where the most eyes are on and they're interacting the most with the people who are now enjoying their work. Right. Um, and then to know that it's not just a looking at it in a, a print of it on a wall in a gallery. There's an experience right. of it. Right. And, and, and whether you have purposely made it interactive or not, it is an experience because it's, it's just such a unique, I don't know, like, you know, walking by and seeing someone pouring their heart out and chalk on the sidewalk, it's, it's something that makes you pause. It, it reminds it, you of something. I don't know. It's, 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 really, it's really a performance it's a great art. great shared experience. Yeah. It, it really is because, because we are there and people get to see the process, which yeah. is very unique. I mean, you don't get to see the artists painting, you know, most paintings that, that go up in galleries and things. That right. they're, they're away by themselves. So this, this gives people a unique opportunity to see the beginning, the middle, and the end at different stages and to just sit and talk to the artist. And, you know, where did you get the idea for this? Why are you doing this? You know? Right. So, so if you're right there. You know, you're, you're interacting with the people that way. And, and so we do consider it more of a performance art. And, and it's like when you go listen to a band, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you listen to it, you have an experience, you walk away with nothing. Right. Except the, the memory that's of it. True. That's and this, true. And that's what this and is. And people talk about the concerts and the shows that they've seen for years. Right, yeah. right. You know, and they may take a little bit of video or a couple of photos, but it's, it's more what you remember right. the experience for. And that's, that's really what this is. And, you know, when, when I get hired, I'm getting hired as an entertainer. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm there during the whole event, you know, two or three days during a, a festival or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that, that's, it, when you start thinking of it like that, it, it, it tends to make more sense. I yeah, guess, yeah. You know? No, I totally, I totally get it now. Yeah. I think, at least I think I do. I don't yeah. know. I'm not the one doing it, but I think I totally get it. <laughs> so how, well, how does the, 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 Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The surface that you're you're working on. I mean, I can imagine you you worked on all kinds of things: tile, gravel, yes. concrete. Yeah. You know, how much does that affect how you plan a piece? It it, it affects it um, a lot. Sometimes I don't know what I'm getting into mm -hmm. until I'm actually on site, which can, is very frustrating. But I try to plan for different uh, you know scenarios, I guess, mm -hmm. and um, it. it if it's um, the paint that we use, the tempera, the washable kids paint, helps to create a, um, a surface. It's like gesso on a canvas. It kind of primes yeah. it or yeah. preps it. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's kind of my fallback because if it's really slick or, you know, like sometimes I've, I've been on granite tiles or, or, you know, bricks and things like that, very slick, chalk's not going to stick to it. Mm -hmm. So, but if we use that tempera paint, it'll help to, to give us a surface to, to actually adhere to. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just, you know, you do, you're there and it, you make it work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and then that's the, that's one of the challenges of it. It's, it's like, I've, I've come away with bloody fingers, oh my you know, I've, I've ripped all my fingernails off. What? Sometimes I use gloves. Sometimes I don't, yeah. you know, sometimes it's so hot it melts your fingers because the, the asphalt oh my is gosh. hot and black, right, you know? Right. Never so, thought of that. And I've been so, so cold too, that where I couldn't feel my fingers. Oh my freezing. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do, you know, go inside, warm up, and That's then come true, back because, out. I mean, you're working outside the whole time. Yeah, usually yeah. I imagine. I do, I do do some inside work, but I try to um, really. I, I like being outside on the ground. Yeah. Um, there are some artists who do work where they'll do it on a canvas and then bring it, roll it out, you know, and then people will stand on it or whatever. And it gives the same illusion, but to me, it's not the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's something about being outside actually on the ground. And I've had people come up to me and go, um, uh, we want to buy that. And I'm like, well, it's on the ground. <laughs> and they're like, no, no, we want to buy that. might have to call the city. I don't think I have anything to do with it at this point. <laughs> we, we had, and one guy I had to go back and forth three times. I said, no, it's on the ground. <laughs> It's it's physically on like, the not surface. On the ground, let me pick it up for yeah. you. It's yeah. on the ground. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like you cannot buy it. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> so, so yeah, so how what are those interactions like with the crowd? Because I know that must that must be something that you is it something you had to get used to or something that you always embraced and, and loved? Um, I, I like doing it and that's that's part of what I like because I, I it's a lot of outreach too. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's it's um, I love talking to kids. I do workshops now too where I teach all ages how to do it. 
Um, it, it's just, I enjoy talking about it. I do get the, a lot of the same questions over and over again. And sometimes it gets a little old. It's like, okay, here it comes. Right, right. And, and, <laughs> right. and we, we've even talked about doing shirts with those four or five questions right, on the back. Right, so right. that when we're talking, they can just read the back of the shirt before they ask. But they never, nobody reads. Right. Nobody reads, they just start asking. <laughs> Um, but yeah, what happens when it rains? You know, why do you do this? Um, yeah, there's a couple of them. Is How'd that you think really of this chalk? One or, is, oh, yeah, is it really chalk? Is it really chalk? Um, and that's because a lot of the ones that I do are, are so the color's so intense and mm -hmm. so um, um, realistic that mm -hmm. it, it doesn't look like chalk. Mm -hmm. It's soft and well blended too. Like right. I, like I'm, uh, you know, you've done a lot of you did a lot of angel pieces, and I, I saw looking closely at the faces, it's like. It's so soft and well, uh, I loved it. Yeah. You're so impressive. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just, it's, it's, it, 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 you know, we understand or we, we realize that we're going to get a lot of the same questions every yeah. time and that's just part of it, you know, yeah. and it's okay. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's just part of the game and, um, we, you know, the, the one thing that I really enjoy about this is that I've connected with a lot of different artists. Who also do the same thing and we all kind of go to the we meet up at all these different festivals mm -hmm. a lot and and we all know each other and connected on facebook and stuff too but um it, we you know we learn from each other we help each other out it's a very um kind of a nurturing group of people okay good and it's probably worldwide i mean maybe i want to say 200 artists at the most mm -hmm. and and the ones that do the 3d we're talking probably about 25 or 30 wow. who really do it at that same level right right, right. um there's not a lot of them um i think they had yeah maybe maybe 35 at the most but mm -hmm. um but it, you know i i get to, to to be with them and talk to them and we get to see each other and ask each other questions and sometimes we'll work together if it you know something works out and we want to you know i want to work with that artist mm -hmm. or, or that type of thing so and i also think uh, you know i don't mean to cut you off but i also think it's kind of interesting because any other artists that come together in big groups like that they're not necessarily doing their art in front of each other but when you're going to festivals I mean you're inches away from, from yeah. one another right I mean it's like they were like blocked off sections like. well and sometimes we're like one of the festivals we were we're literally next to each other mm -hmm. by we were separated by a piece of duct tape you know <laughs> so you had to be careful not to sit on right. their piece while you're working on your piece and you know that type of thing and, and so yeah you, you get real get to know them very well <laughs> by the end of the weekend yeah and then which ones to stay away from yeah yeah I imagine they're, that they're different person you know, personalities they, so, yeah they talk too much or you know they, they, they sing or they you know there's yeah yeah or they're messy there's some that do, the stuff just goes everywhere and <laughs> You know, it invades every other yeah, yeah. <laughs> space. So there, there, you know, there's something like that. But yeah. but um, yeah. it, it it is a really nice group of artists. Um, very non-competitive mm -hmm. in terms of you know what you would maybe think of. Yeah, that's good. Um, that's good. We do all try to help each other out. Um, you know, if somebody calls me and I can't do a job or I, I there's a thing there, I'll call one of the others. Sometimes I'll hire other artists to help me. You know, it just. If, if we have a surface we don't know how to work with, we'll work together and try to figure yeah. something out, you know, so it's, it's, um, and, and we try really hard to get these festivals not to do competitions. The, do they, they, is that something that people they, are trying to do? They want to yeah. because it gives them something to sell mm. and it's like, oh, we're going to have a competition, we're going to give away money, blah, 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 you know, that's how they sell it, but we don't, we would rather not and, and a few of the, the events have, have started doing this thing where they'll invite, you know, a bunch of professional artists, use that to promote the art, the, the, the whole festival mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and use the money to pay for all of our travel expenses and, you know, give us a stipend and pay, you know, feed us and everything. Right. And we, we would much more prefer that that because then we're not creating art to compete with each other to fit right. a mold we have a little more latitude to kind of be more creative and and work our own style and, and just express you know. yeah. yeah and I think the the art come becomes much more diverse and, and interesting that way so um, but it's hard because the, these people who do these events just you know it's 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 all about you know promoting it, the event mm -hmm, for them mm -hmm. um so it, it, it's tough we're, we're we're getting there i think we're we're slowly getting through to some of the the event coordinators and and they're learning what you know the artists want and what the artists need yeah. 
Um, and, and that's what one of the things that I've really done a lot of work on trying to help these um, places do and, and, and um, to help the artists, you know, mm -hmm. all of them. Um, because, you know, we're not going to unionize, but, you know, if some of them do it for free and some of them charge, you know, these festivals are going to go to the, the people who of do it course, for free. Right, right. And, and, you know, they'll, they may pay them their, their airfare, but. They're you know, devaluing the overall work. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's always going to be some of those, but, but I think the, the really high end professionals, we all understand that, that there's a value here and, and people need to pay for it right. and understand what the value is. Right. And um, so that's part of being that connected is really good for us too because we, we can see what other people are doing, what they're, you know, asking what they're charging, mm -hmm, what, mm -hmm. you know, how did that work, what's going on, you know, and, and um, it's, it's helped us all a lot. I mean, yeah. I really was interested um, in hearing more about your, your business savvy. Because in doing what I do for this podcast, you know, I'm really, I really want to encourage people to do what they love mm -hmm. and find something that they're passionate about. And that could be just a hobby. It could be something completely full time or it could fall somewhere in between. Right. right, right. And I, I usually, you know, people usually say, do something practical, you know, make sure you get an education, something quote unquote practical so that when you're idealistic follow your dreams thing like falls on its face and fails you have something practical to fall back on I thought it was interesting when I read your story that it kind of ended up the opposite way where you had this corporate job like you were mentioning that fell through and then you fell back on your dream and you found out you figured out how to make it work and I thought that was that was a really interesting and, and to listen to you talk about you sound extraordinarily business savvy so um, how did you figure that part out? Because um, a lot of times when I talk to artists, that's the pitfall they, they experience a lot is that business side. Um, so how, do, how have you figured out how to be successful in this pursuit? Well, yeah, I think, and I, I agree. I, the, and I've seen that with a lot of artists where they, they, they just don't know how to run a business. Yeah. And, and I did, um, you know, I worked in a couple of large corporations when I was younger which that was really helpful because I could see how all that worked and, mm -hmm. and what was going on in marketing and advertising basically mm -hmm. so um, but then I also freelanced for quite a few years while I was raising my daughters and um, so you know I knew about you know the basics of, of that type of thing and I wasn't really pushing it I was just kind of doing it in, in part-time basically um, but I think it's the it's a kind of that balance between having the, some of the business sense, but also having the advertising marketing background too, because you really have you have to market yourself. Absolutely, you know, you, it all falls on you. Yeah, you know, yeah. nobody's going to do it for you. Yeah, and um, and then my partner Craig has he has a, a business. He's has has had his own businesses in the past. Um, but he also understands the marketing and, and, you know, understands that kind of thing, too. So we would talk about a lot of this stuff, too. We would talk it through. We'd go, you know, well, what, you know, what do you think? You've been, you know, what do we have to do? What, what's, what's the next step? And, and he was the one who, who really encouraged me to, to kind of do up a business plan. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, that really did help a lot because it, it kind of solidifies in your mind, okay, this is what I need to focus on. Right, right. Otherwise, I'm shooting all over the place. Exactly. You know, I, exactly. I'm going to oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. So that really helped us to, to kind of focus on a few things and, and get them done in a, within a year's time or mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, even, but even just stuff like, like getting basic um, insurance or, or doing an invoice or, mm -hmm. you know, I, a lot of that I learned from being in a large corporation. I right. learned how it worked. I learned how you send an invoice and bill people and okay. all that stuff. And I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess a lot of artists either never have to do that or um, are never, you know, have a job where they have to do it or they learn, they don't learn it in school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I didn't learn it in school. I kind of wish I had, but yeah. I took no business classes. I, mean, I wish I had. But um, yeah, it was just basically learning it by doing it and, and, and being 
around it and, and you know soaking it all up. Right. I did go. Um, I did go back to school f- to try to get an MBA. Um, it was a long time ago. It was like back in 1989, and I did about a year's worth at Pepperdine when I was out in California. Okay. But I got frustrated because because most of the other students were like engineers <laughs> and who who really all they did was engineering you know they 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 got projects they worked on projects they sent them gave them to their managers or whatever so they really didn't run businesses or know how businesses worked and i already knew a lot of that stuff yeah and so i felt like i was kind of wasting my time i, was I like, understand I, that. I already know how to do this why am i in here so i i kind of after that i i just stop going and I was like you know I'm, I'm just gonna work and, and and I learned a lot on the job I mean that's where a lot of my, my experience comes from right right um, my my first real job out of college was for Domino's Pizza mm-hmm. and I worked um, in advertising and marketing and I did a lot of stuff but I didn't have a lot of oversight you know I didn't have somebody telling me everything I had to do I was very kind of free to do what I needed to do mm-hmm. and so I would that's how I learned a lot of stuff too you know Mm -hmm. I I didn't have somebody everything lined out you have to do this this and this and so I I did catalogs I did you know that I'd never done before I did photo shoots that I'd never done before you know and my next job after that was the same type of thing I mean I I did have you know a boss and a manager but um, I just if, if, if an opportunity came up, I jumped at it. Yeah. And, and that's what this, the street painting, too, I tell a lot of people, I think you just have to be open to that experience. And when that thing comes that you, that clicks with you, you got to be ready to, to do something about it. Yeah. Don't, don't sit there and, and think about it for three years. Right. You know, right, if, right. If, if you really like it and, and, it's, and there's an opportunity there, you need to jump. Absolutely. And, and jump on it quick. Because <laughs> <laughs> if the opportunities pass as fast as they come. Right, right. And, and so I think a lot of people, they get frozen. Mm-hmm. They, they're like, I no, there's a I can't there. do that. Yeah. You know, I, that, that's not for me. Or I'm yeah. not the right person for that. Or... You know, they have all these doubts and things that come in, and I right. really, you know, and I, I'm a very cautious person too. But, but you know, when I found my passion, I just like, oh my God, this is this is what I need to do. This That's is amazing. it. Yeah, it's amazing. And and I hear younger people very frustrated. You know, like I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm, you know, I'm not in the right major. I'm not, you know, what I, yeah. And I'm like. I didn't find it until I was 40. There's a lot of, you know, Grandma Moses and there's other painters who mm-hmm. didn't, didn't really start painting till they were older. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard of musicians, people, all sorts of different areas where they didn't, they didn't find it until they got older. And, right. and sometimes you need that experience through life trying different things until you get hit the right one. Right, right, you know? right. Or, or in your case, it was something that you didn't even know existed. Right. <laughs> the thing. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you had told me, uh, you know, when I was in college at, at a UCLA, oh yeah, you're going to be a street painter and you're going to draw on the street with chalk, I would have said, yeah, you're crazy. <laughs> no way, I'm not going to do that. And then I'm going to graduate kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? So, yeah, I mean, and, and I was really focused on, on, on advertising at that point. I mean, yeah. even though I was doing a lot of uh, different types of art, but my, my degree was based on design, so it was a little different than, than going, like, for visual art and painting, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. even though it was an art degree. But it was really nice because it taught me how to project manage. It, it was every, everything we did um, it was, you know, here's a project, and that's what, what street painting is. You yeah, know, start, yeah. start to finish, you know, how do you get from A to B, B to C, C to D, right. you know, what do you have to do to do this? And, and, and this type of art is very much project management oriented. And if you, if you can't manage a, a project, you can't do this. That I mean, I, you can't just show up and do it. And especially for corporates, you know, they want, it, they want everything ahead of time, they want, you know, so, so it's just a, it's been a combination of different things I think that have led me to, to give me the experience to know how. But I do try to help the other artists as much as I can, and and like I've had other artists go, well, you know, do you have a contract? I was like, yes, I have a contract. I, I took up I took a performance contract and I, I edited it and, and mm-hmm. modified it for chalk art. And I said, I'll I'll send you a blank contract. You can just do whatever you want with it. But at least it's a starting point. Right, right. You know, and it, it covers a lot of things that I don't think a lot of people think about. You know, what do you do about cleaning it afterwards? What do you do about cleaning it, having a, the surface ready for you? Mm-hmm. Who's going to take care of, you know, getting a ladder there? Who's going to, you know, the photography? Yeah. All those things that I don't 
think a lot of people think about. Right, you know, right. They're like, oh, yeah, I'll show up and do it. Or, or just assume that they will shoulder all that responsibility right, rather right. than sharing that responsibility with the people who are hiring. Them. Right, and who's going to, you know, you got to have it in writing. You know, who's paying for you to get there? Who's going to, you know, are you responsible for your food? Are you bringing all the supplies? Mm -hmm, you know, just mm -hmm. all those things that it's part of the whole project that um, if you approach it that way it's it's not hard mm -hmm. but it's you just have to know how to do it right right so. so that leads me to a couple of questions um, I guess I'll let me start with hmm, which one should I ask first I don't know <laughs> um, okay so <laughs> when you talk about other street artists who aren't charging Right. I think a lot of that comes from, uh, you know, just guessing and projecting my own insecurities. Um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of that can come from this uh, discomfort that sometimes people have with um, celebrating what they are, right? You know, you don't want to charge people or bring it up that you want to charge people because you're afraid to put the value that you should on yourself. Yeah. In, and, and, you know, and so there's a fear of, well, what if I ask for too much and they say no? Um, or, or, you know, they can come, just add it to the laundry list of reasons why people are afraid to put one foot in front of the other. Right. How do you, how have you countered that fear in yourself? Have you ever had that? Or have you always had that confidence that said, no, I have this value, so I will not walk forward in this without knowing I'm charging this for this, this for this, and this for this. Yeah, it's it's part of its um, experience, mm -hmm. you know, knowing what to charge, mm -hmm. and 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 but you know, kind of like asking around too. And some artists will tell you, and some won't. You know, yeah. some don't want to tell you, and that's fine. You know, I, I understand why they wouldn't want to, but um, it's it's um, I I have more confidence because I've been doing it for a while. But when I first started, I was like. God, I have no idea. Where do I start? <laughs> right. You know, right? And and so I asked one of the other artists, and they're like, "Well, we're we're charging a thousand, you know, for the weekend or something, you know." And I was like, "Okay, that sounds, sounds good. good. <laughs> I'll do it for that, you know." And and so part of it is just you know helping the other artists realize that there's a value yeah. that they need to ask for to be paid, yeah. you know. Um, and and I, a lot of these festivals, they they wouldn't be able to even have the events if people didn't do it for free and I get that I totally get that you know a lot of it is just getting the community out there to come out and have fun and, and volunteer their time and their efforts or whatever right that's you know and that's part of it but but for the featured artists the artists who are making a living doing this they you know I've been really pushing these these other artists it's like don't underestimate yourself don't mm -hmm. undercut yourself mm -hmm. and and sometimes we are bidding against each other for for the same jobs right it's happened and you know sometimes I've kicked myself and gone I didn't ask enough you yeah. know I should have charged more or or I lost something maybe because I did charge too much right I'm, I'm more comfortable now with if I lose something because I oh I overbid it mm -hmm. too high and I was like okay well you know but this is what my time's worth. Right, right. And and I'm so busy now that I can do that, and that's that's a really nice place to be. Yeah, and I'm sure something <laughs> something's not too far down the line that's going to replace that slot anyways. If, right. If you do, you know, lose something for a particular weekend, I'm sure there's another opportunity that's that's right around the corner. Yeah, and yeah. I and there's a couple events that I do for free every year just because of the exposure that I get. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing is you have to realize that these are a lot of these are for exposure, or whatever. And I hate that word. I hate, that's <laughs> <laughs> I, I just that when people put that up there and say you know you can do this for the exposure, but there are times when it and it's important for marketing purposes, right. and you have to think of it as a marketing expense. Right. So if you if you think of it that way and realize that you know that's okay and that I'm going to get lots of people to see my work and I'm going to hand out a lot of cards and I'm going to talk to a lot of people. Um, you know, maybe get written up in the paper or whatever. Then it's it's okay, but mm -hmm. it. It's, you have to do those um, very, you have to know and understand that that's what you're doing and right. why you're doing it, right. not just do it. Right. You know, and, and I think um, some of the artists who have kind of eventually gotten more professional, they realize that too, you know, they, they realize that they've, they've got to charge a certain amount, this is what it costs to do it, you know, and, and you get so busy, it, you, you just, you can only do so much. Right. So, right. Um, 
but yeah it's it's there there's some artists who just do it because they can they'll, they'll pay all the travel expenses and they get to go places and that's okay with them you know that they get to go places that they wouldn't normally go right, that's right, their, right. their vacations right kind of right um, and they a lot of them have other jobs um, and then they they go and do this kind of as their I want to say hobby but um, they are getting compensated because they're paying all their expenses they're f feeding them they're putting up in a hotel they're, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, whatever yeah. So, so I don't, I don't know if you call them semi-professionals. I mean, they're professionals because they are getting some money. Yeah. But they, those, those artists aren't as um, worried about the, the stipend or the, the, the fee part of it. Because they're not fully making a living off of this yeah, one thing. Yeah, yeah. So when you, were, when you were thinking about how to make a living, because um, obviously you're an extraordinarily creative person, yeah. but there is a different piece of creativity I think that has to come in and realizing how you can apply what you are passionate about um, to something that someone who has the pockets is willing to pay for so right, right. Um, you know how, you know a company that can use your talents in their advertising mm -hmm. <clears throat> when people when you hear about for example graphic design that you you built a career off of that seems it's it's much more of a given oh I need some logos made go to a graphic designer but to to think, oh, I, I'm gonna have a, we're gonna have a company party or debut a product or something like that. Let's have a street artist. That's not a typical thing that people would think about. So how have you not to use the ugly word of exposure, <laughs> but gain the exposure where people now see that as a viable option, a thing that they are aware of and know of, and now you are applying your talent and your passion to something that is a product. Right. And that, the the thing that I liked about the chalk art was that I found that I could I could charge more for it and get better paid mm -hmm. for it than the graphic design. Mm. And the reason is because there's a lot of graphic designers right, out there, right? Right. And, and there's a lot of painters out there painting right. paintings and trying to sell their paintings, but there aren't very many people who can do this. Right. Right. And that was one of the things that went ding, ding, ding in my brain. I was like. I'm a really unique commodity, right, right. so I can charge more and I can make a better living doing it. Mm. So um, that was, yeah, and, and stumbling across it, it was kind of one of those things where, it, you know, I saw the value of it yeah. fairly quickly. And, and took advantage of it, you know. And like I said, good for you. It would, it would have been it would have been really easy for me to just say, no, I'm just going to do this for fun, and I'm going to go to these different festivals. But I was like, no, no, there's an opportunity here, right, you know. Right. So, um, and then one of the, our, our things in our business plan was to get on uh, all the search engines. So when people Google up 3D street art mm -hmm, or 3D chalk mm -hmm. art, that we would the more we were out there, either with videos or photos or whatever, that it would rise to the top exactly. and, and people would find it exactly so and then and the other thing in my business plan was to do a variety of different ways of showing the chalk art so that when the client looked at my website they could say oh yeah that's what we want we want something sort of like that right right you know, right when you don't have that it is a lot harder to sell it right so so that was part of the the plan too, making was, it easy for the other for the end user to see the vision that you were right trying right. to sell them yeah and it's like you know when you're doing product tasting or whatever it's like you, the minute they taste it it's like oh yeah this is great I'm right. gonna right. buy this right I mean, right it's right the same thing right exactly yeah exactly so um so yeah yeah, that, that was a big part of it. Um, yeah. Well, um, I, I'm super impressed with, with you and your talents and, and where you're fearlessly going with them. <laughs> and I, I, I would be um, remiss if I didn't touch on, you know, because you've done a lot of traveling with this. Yeah. And you, yeah. You've, you've managed to see a lot of the world. Had you done a lot of traveling before you discovered chalk art? No, and that was one of the reasons I did it. I, mm. I went into this too, was because I wanted to travel. Yeah, and and I had stayed at home with my kids for quite a few years, and I was married at the time to a, a neurosurgeon who could never leave town because he was always on call. Right, right. <laughs> was, Again, one of those. It was very frustrating. There are a whole lot of them. So <laughs> right, and it was it was very frustrating because I wanted to go places. I wanted to take the kids places. I wanted to travel. Right. So we didn't, and then I got divorced, and and. I I, you know, this started to pop up, and I'm, and I started seeing the festivals in different areas, and I'm like, this was this will give me a chance to travel, and yeah. it'll pay all my expenses. Yeah, and it's a really unique way to travel too, because when we go, 
um, we get we get to interact with the people who live there and are organizing the festival or you know um, talk to more of the local type of people rather than doing the tourist type of stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so um, it's it's just a much different experience and we enjoy it and Craig and I enjoy that mm -hmm. much more than, mm -hmm. than being a you know going on a bus and you know touring type right of right right so more I immersive don't, experience well yeah and I don't always get to go see what the typical tourist type of stuff is but I still get to go someplace and and, and kind of experience it in a different way. Right, right. So, um, and, and the other thing is, it, these chalk events are usually in a nice place with good weather. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time. Except for those occasional times when you do freeze your fingers, yeah. like you mentioned before, right. or, or melt them, off, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but it, uh, in general, <laughs> right, it's, right, it's right. usually a good time of well, year. Where are some year. of the places you've been? Um, well, I've been to Germany three times mm. the last three years. Uh, I've been to Ireland. Um, and I've been to Curacao twice. They, wow. they had an event down there, and we went for like a, almost a week. And sometimes I'll be there for almost a week at a time, depending on if I'm doing workshops too. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been all over the U.S. I've been to Wyoming a couple times, um, doing pieces there. I've been to um, Missouri. Um, Branson, Missouri has a really nice um, theme park there um, that I've done. I was there for actually a couple weeks in a row mm. um, doing work there um, all over. I mean, yeah, almost, um, you know, California, Georgia, um, I want to say at least probably 10 different states. Wow. Um, Canada. Um, yeah, so it's... And there, there's events all over the world now too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, there's opportunity to go to a lot of, a lot of places. I've been approached by a few, like Russia wanted to do something, and that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. and, and it, it gets a little bit weird. I know there's stuff in, in like Dubai and and um, Turkey, and I know a guy is trying to do it in Turkey. And it's like. Well, you know, <laughs> I think not we go. Right I'm not too. sure. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but. Check back in a couple of years. Yeah, you know, and how do you transfer the money, get paid? Oh, There's that's true. Some place like Russia is a little bit sketchy. Yeah. You know, they won't, they don't let money come out of sometimes in those, those countries. So, um, but the, you know, the ones that I've been to so far have been awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just been really good experiences and um, just really met really great people and, um, yeah, I, I hope to do more, you know, and, and it, it, because this is such a very physical type of artwork, art type of thing, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if I can do it for, you know, 10 years, 20 years. So I'm like pushing, pushing, pushing. Yeah, because you get right in there with your knee pads and all. Like, I was like, you go, girl. Well, and, and I actually had uh, back surgery before I started street painting. Oh, my God. So I had, um, uh, I, I grew up and I had scoliosis, and then I had some minor back surgery um, back in like 99, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. 2000. I have a family member with that who's who been through that, yeah. Yeah, and and um, so I do have to be careful. I'm not like, you know, I do get some pain and stuff like that, and have to manage it. But I, I know how to do it. Um, but yeah, so it's like I don't know if I because it's so physical and so hard to do. Um, how how long I can do it? Mm -hmm. So I'm just pushing to do as many as I can, as long as I can, until my, my back totally gives out. <laughs> at that point, when your back, you know, hopefully never happens, but at that point, if and when your back does totally give out, and you stop the street art, and maybe you're creating on canvas again in the quiet of your home or something like that, I'm making yeah. it up in my head. What will? What do you think your expression artistic expression will be different in those quieter times than they are now with the crowds all around you as you were um i don't know i i, I am doing more murals um just because i've gotten opportunities to do them and um like i'm going to be doing the the big one down at canvas um so i'm, I'm oh, one wow. of the seven artists who are going to be in that local oh, that's showdown so, neat. so that's like three sides of a, of a shipping container yeah and um that's going to be a big project it's a it, it's still physically demanding to do murals because you're up and down ladders and you know it's not totally like just painting on a canvas right i think you know eventually maybe i'll 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 just have to switch to, to go back to painting and you know inside on a canvas or something like that or walls maybe um but it's and then immediately throw paint over it when you're done and yeah. start over <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, or, or manage other artists and, and, and continue the my, my business, but but have a couple of artists that, that I can just, yeah. you know, send I think that'd be great, stuff, so. managing other, because, you know, like you're talking about offering up the contract and stuff like that. It seems like an easy thing for you to also, that's a side yeah, and I, I like I had tried to get a, an agent and and to see if I could get somebody who could sell my work and get me jobs like that, and I just couldn't. Yeah. I, I there it was such a weird thing. Yeah, they probably didn't know how to approach it. They didn't, and I've got I do have uh, you know a couple of uh, ad big ad agencies who I've worked with, and and they're like, yeah, this is great, but it's very kind of one off. It's like they do it once or twice for for something that they're promoting, but then they're like. We we're on to doing something new, something right, else, right, and they, right. they don't use it on a regular basis. Right. So it's like I'm constantly reselling myself and re trying to find new customers. But, um, but yeah, I, I, you know, it's like I get contacted by people all the time, just out of the blue, just hey, what does it cost to do chalk art? We, we're thinking about doing chalk art, and so, you know, I'll send out a quote or I'll get more information first. I always ask for more information, mm -hmm. and then I, I kind of work up a kind of a estimate. And then if they're serious and they've got the budget, well, you know, we'll go to a formal quote type of system and, right, and, right. or a contract and get them to do it that way. Um, but yeah, I could definitely see uh, managing other people and, and, and doing it that way. I've also got the International Street Painting Society, which I'd like to spend more time with, but I'm so darn busy. I don't have time for it. It's very frustrating because I want to do more of that. And um, I'm working now at the Lighthouse Arts Center, too. And um, that's a great experience too, because it's so, it's just a joy to work with yeah. a, a place that's just totally art focused for a change. I've always been in either corporate or, right. you know, I worked for the town of Jupiter for seven years and, and you know, you could, you could be artistic, you could do advertising, you could do all that stuff, but it, it wasn't what they're selling. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you're in an art center or you're with the, you know, international street painting or whatever, that's what it is. That's the core of yeah. the, the business, and so um, I've always been trying to push towards that. And so it's really neat to be working there. It's it's um, been one of my goals. That's amazing. That. So where can people find you if they want to be in touch with you about street painting and looking into your services and stuff? Well, Amazing Street Painting is my website, mm -hmm. so AmazingStreetPainting.com, <laughs> um, and all the information and there's contact information on there. So if they need to get a hold of me. That's probably the best way to do it. It's easy to remember and find on the internet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and and I, I you know there's a there's a contact information thing on there. Um, that's probably the best way. Are yeah. you, are there um, any events already lined up that for the public to come see you? Um, I I do, and I, if you go to my website, there's an event page, and okay. it says this, and, and actually at the top it says these are my upcoming events, and there's links to the events so you can see more about where it is and and you know how to get there. Okay. Um, but yeah. I've got um, not too much locally. I've got um, Baltimore's next week. Then I'm going to be in Georgia and Marietta at the Chalktoberfest, and that's a big one. Oh, that sounds neat. Yeah, <laughs> lots of lots of beer and, and chalk. <laughs> not 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 by me. I don't get to do the beer until after I'm done. But yeah, you don't want to mix it too. No, it doesn't come doesn't out work doesn't, right. Something something doesn't come out right. <laughs> right, right. And then um, let's see. Down here though, probably not till February. Okay. For the and. and that's the uh, the Lake Worth event. It's always the last weekend in February. Okay. Um, that's an awesome event. I mean, it's free. The parking's free. The you know, there's no entry fee. You can come as many times as you want. It's really it's a great event. And I'm uh, usually on um, Lake Avenue. Oh no, Lucerne. Lucerne is the one near the post office. So I'm usually on that street with the featured artists. Um, and then I'll be at the, the canvas thing, which is that first week in November. So I'll be painting that, and that's going to be in Northwood. Okay. So, um, and if I win, I get to do like I guess paint on a regular wall, um, you know. So they, uh, they like something more like a permanent. permanent. Oh, yeah. Okay. So they've got seven of us who are who are going to be doing the shipping containers, and then people are going to be voting on an app, I think. Gotcha. And then one one of the local people gets to actually have a wall to paint on. Gotcha. Um, and they're bringing another um, muralist from around the world, I guess, for this 
um, to do murals too. Oh so, <laughs> and that'll be like early to mid November. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh so, my gosh. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, and that's that's. I was really excited to be picked for that because um, just to be part of that group is really a, a big. Yeah, a big yeah. Thing. And and I, I, I did I read correctly? You're a you're a um, um, official master of street art of street. Um, Yep, yep. Chuck Art? Um, ma uh, ma ma <laughs> Maestro. Maestro. I guess, or, yeah. Um, the, the Florida Chalk Art Association has levels that you can do, and there's three levels, and you have to submit certain amounts of things to prove that you're the yeah. master of the, those things, you yeah. know? And that was part of my business plan, was to, to get to that level of certification yeah. to show people that I was, you know, a master. There you go. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it involved a couple of different things. Like, you had to chalk different types of things. You had to show um, that you wrote an article, that you won awards, you know, different, different things at different levels. But um, that was, you know, again, that was one of those things we thought, well, you know, that would help sell myself. Of that, course. That I have this official certification Stamp. right right <laughs> not that most people know what it is but but still you can say i'm a master <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean that's pretty awesome right right <laughs> well i have i've been super privileged and thrilled to uh sit with the master <laughs> i have um there's a term that i i coined called a curvist and a curvist is someone who thinks outside the box doesn't um necessarily confine themselves to one path in life and if they discover something they're passionate about they go for it and curve the way around the obstacles and yeah. figure out how to make it happen and you my dear are someone who has figured out how to make it happen and you're super impressive and should be very proud of yourself and um, i wish you nothing but the best for everything that is yet to come thank you thank you um, would you mind signing off the podcast it's super easy sure all, uh, is it Chaparro, Chaparro? Chaparro. Chaparro. So um, however you would like to introduce yourself, you can just say, um, I'm Jennifer Chaparro with Curve the Cube. Okay. I'm Jennifer Chaparro, and this is Curve the Cube. Yay! <laughs> High five. <laughs> you Thank go, you. girl. <laughs> You're great. Yeah, Thank, you Thank you so much. <laughs> Yay, this was fun. You have successfully curved the cube. So I hope you enjoyed that 97th episode. 97, oh my gosh, we're almost out of double digits, guys. It's so exciting. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that episode with Jennifer Shapiro. She's fantastic, isn't she? Oh my gosh, go online right now to AmazingStreetPainting.com and check out her her work and um, book her, you know, gain her consulting. If you have a business, my gosh, think of all the really cool... Like, what a splash you can make at a debut of a product or service or a new location or whatever to have her stuff there. Oh, she could do some such cool things. So go go look her up and check it out. And this episode of Curve the Cube is sponsored by the lovely, lovely, lovely Miss Janice Massey of the Janice Massey Salon. I have no idea how she came up with the name of her business, but there you go. Um, she does natural hair. That is her specialty. She is uh, currently in charge of maintaining my own locks, and she does a fantastic wonderful job and she's really the best game in town so you got to go look her up look up Janice Massey hair or uh, natural hair by Janice Massey .com and get her services because she is fantastic and she's a really great lady too and wonderful person human being and you always want to support support good good people girl power all of that so go look her up um, thank you to DJ John Hitta for the music bed and I also want to give out a shout out to our sister show the vivid arts podcast Vivid Arts is a podcast hosted by our friend Eddie from Eddie uh, from excuse me from EG Labs. They are connecting creative geeks with artists, performers, creative influencers, travelers, and the arts and culture community as a whole on that podcast. And it's really really amazing because South Florida is bursting with talent, and Eddie is very passionate about bringing you insightful conversations to inspire you, yes, you, to pursue your own creative dreams and passions. So take a listen to the Vivid Arts podcast. You can find Vivid Arts at vividartsapp.com, SoundCloud, or on your favorite podcast app. They want to help you discover, share, and grow your own creative passion. So go check them out. They're a really, really great podcast. They're, they're a few episodes deep now, and they're, they're just doing so well. I'm so, so excited for them. And I also want to please ask you to subscribe to Curve the Cube if you like what you heard today on, I hope you did, on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. I would really appreciate 
the extra step though of a comment rating or review too to um help me keep keep, keep me posted on you know how you guys feel about the show and what you like and what you want etc cetera, etc cetera. so please do that and i'm gonna close out this um episode with an intro to my other new podcast project called Eggheads After Hours, which debuts tomorrow, Tuesday, October 4th. So look up Eggheads After Hours on iTunes. That is the best place to find them. Or go to Eggheads AHP, stands for After Hours Podcast, uh, dot com. Eggheads AHP dot com. All right. Bye. Welcome to the Eggheads After Hours Podcast. Join Jemmy, Aaron, Kate, Joe, and Eddie as they talk about all things tech in Palm Beach County. Our co-host talents range from podcasting to web design, blogging to vlogging, digital marketing to tech conferences, and so much more. From the latest in global tech trends to what's popping right here on Clematis Street, the eggheads are exploring where the geek meets the ground running, putting tech into our community and the community into our tech. Follow us everywhere at Eggheads AHP. It's the Eggheads After Hours Podcast.